Hi, welcome to 5 Minutes About Pulsar. My name is Paul Gear. I'm on the streaming team here at Datastax, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get started with Pulsar on Kubernetes. If you want to use Pulsar but don't want to manage your own Kubernetes cluster, visit astro.datastax.com and get a free Pulsar instance up and running in under a minute. If you have any questions or feedback, you can leave a comment below or email us at pulsarquestions at datastax.com. That will go to the Pulsar team here at Datastax, and we have lots of Pulsar experts that would be happy to help answer your questions or help you with any Pulsar problems you may be experiencing. So why might you want to use Kubernetes? After all, it's a pretty complex tool, and it can be challenging. Well, it provides some pretty impressive features, and it does this in a mostly standardized way. It can help with high availability, scaling, and automation. And because it's standardized, you can usually move from one provider to another without huge changes in your config. So how exactly do you install Pulsar into a Kubernetes cluster? Well, the good news is that you, if you already have a cluster, a lot of the configuration is already written for you in the form of Helm charts. If you haven't used Helm before, it's a tool to generate and manage Kubernetes config files. Now, I've already installed a small Pulsar cluster using the official Apache Helm chart. So let's go take a look. I'm using a tool called K9S or K9s to view the cluster components. The Helm install that I ran created a Kubernetes deployment for each of the required Pulsar components. As you can see, we have a Pulsar broker, a bookkeeper, and a zookeeper. Helm also took care of the wiring between them. This means that, for example, the Pulsar proxy can communicate with the broker, and the broker can communicate with the bookkeeper. All this was set up without any manual ne networking configuration. So let's try sending and receiving some messages and see what happens. I'm going to start at Pulsar Consumer, which will read messages from a persistent topic called Demo1. Since we're not even sending any messages, this consumer will just sit and wait. Next, I'll start a producer, which sends one message every second. We should see these messages getting picked up by our consumer. Looks fine, but couldn't we have done this with a standalone Pulsar and not needed all this Kubernetes stuff? Well, yes, we could have. So let's make things a little more interesting. I'm going to purposely break the bookkeeper by setting it to an invalid container image so that messages can no longer be sent. Now you can see that the bookie is in an error state. And if we check on the producer, we can see that it's failing because of the broken bookkeeper and it's retrying every five seconds to send the message. Now, if you're like most support engineers, when something breaks like this, the first question that comes to mind is, did you try turning it off and on again? So let's try that with Kubernetes by deleting the broken bookkeeper pod. Now we can see that the broken pod is deleted and a new pod is starting up with a hopefully working bookkeeper. If we go back to the producer, we can see that messages are now coming through again. And next, let's say that we want our Pulsar cluster to have high availability. So let's configure the cluster so that a failure of a single bookkeeper doesn't break our producer and consumer. First, I'm going to scale the number of bookies from one to three. You can see that two new bookies are coming up. Next, I'm just going to check that our producer and consumer are running. So we can see that the producer is sending messages and the consumer is picking them up. Then I'm going to break one of the bookkeepers. And hopefully we shouldn't see any interruption in service for the producer and consumer. So now you can see that our bookie 0 is in a crash loop state. And bookie 1 and 2 are still running. So the producer and consumer should still be able to send messages, even with one failed bookie. So if I go back over to the producer and consumer, we can see that they're still sending messages. And even if I go in here and I delete another one of the bookies, now we can see that the messages are still going through from the producer to consumer. So this was just a short introduction to how Pulsar works with Kubernetes. I hope you found it informative and interesting. 
If you'd like to try it out for yourself, you can find plenty of documentation on the Apache Pulsar site about how to deploy your own Pulsar cluster. And feel free to reach out to us at Datastax if you want any additional help. Thanks for watching the video and have a great day.